Today we're making this bottle bird feeder and it is fully adjustable so that you can use a ton of different types of bottles in it. So whether you're using a tequila bottle like this or a wine bottle or any other type of bottle that you can think of, including like whiskey handles, big ones, this can accommodate everything. There's some interesting features in it that make this just more than a simple woodworking project, but believe me, it's incredibly easy to make and approachable for any beginners. Our bottle bird feeder is made up of a total of seven different parts. We have the main body right here, and this is what all the other parts index into. And the reason they index is so that we can have a lot of adjustability built in. Now, it's simple enough to be able to take a bottle and be able to create a birdhouse around it. But the second that you start introducing other bottles into the mix, it starts getting a little bit more difficult. Because maybe you have a specific bottle that you want to use with this. One of those like nice blue glass bottles or even like a huge whiskey handle. And that's where this whole system comes into play because all of this is very adjustable to be able to fit your bottle. We just used two bits over on the CNC machine. We used the bowl cut bit and then our downtown Ginny, which are two of the only three bits that you need to CNC with me. And it took a while to cut out, but the results are super worth it. The material that I used in particular is one inch thick red oak stair tread. And that one inch thickness is really important if you're looking to make this because with these files, everything is set up for one inch material, meaning that if you have three quarter inch material or something, Thing. these slots really aren't going to interact the way that they're supposed to and you're going to have a lot of looseness whereas this is really secure and it's really easy for you to be able to put in your screws and lock everything together. If you don't have the right size material you might have to make a few tweaks to the file in order for everything to work the way that it should. Now some of y'all might have noticed that my wasteboard on my CNC machine is not the best thing in the world. Right now I'm kind of limping along. I've, I've only got a little bit of power here in the shop and it is not doing what I need it to. And in order for me to have the waste board that I need, um, yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're not there yet. So unfortunately I have this huge brand new table saw right next to me and I can't even run it. And once that's up and running, then we're gonna establish our brand new waste board on the machine. But until then, I've just got some random stuff stacked up. And this is the very first project that, that really bit me in the butt because normally I've been doing a lot of profile and a lot of pocketing, but when you're dealing with delicate stuff like this where you really need things to be exact to fit into the different slots, well, that's where things went a little awry. So I did have a little bit of a tough time getting all the way through the material because my wasteboard was by no means flat. But once I did, I went ahead and rounded over everything and it left me with these seven specific parts. Now, this being the main body is what everything is built off of. So first and foremost, we have our little piece that is meant to accept the wine bottle itself or whatever type of bottle you're using. And that's what the neck fits into. So this can quickly and easily slot down. And even without screws, you can see that it can support a lot of weight. Although we have gone ahead and pre-drilled some screw holes through the back with just a regular pre-drill bit into a drill. Now let's go ahead and just put it up in the top one so we can see what we're talking about. First and foremost, let's take our bottle and we've got it in here. That works well enough, but the second the wind comes along, it's gonna start knocking around. That's where our little guard pieces come in. So these can quickly and easily go in here. Once again, we have some pre-drilled spaces where we can go ahead and put our screws in to lock this down once we have decided how it's gonna fit our bottle. Bottle goes down and you might think, well, that really didn't solve the issue. These, you can flip them over and it's going to push the area towards the inside and it's going to give you a much tighter space depending on the size bottle that you have. Now we've got our guards, they'll be screwed in in a second. We have the main area that our bottle sits into and then we have our seed trough. Now our seed trough is gonna be like a pretty static location down here at the bottom and it is <laughs> nice and tight. Now, as some of my eagle-eyed viewers out there might have seen, normally this is gonna be filled up with seed. So in order to feed this area, it is gravity fed. You simply just fill this up with seeds, you flip it over and then it pours out. As the animals start eating more and more, it gives it space so that more can pour out, you know, gravity fed. Well, it being this far up is so much room that it's essentially just going to empty itself immediately. So that's where with this specific bottle, it would just be easy enough to go ahead and drop that down to the lower level. And there you go. You've got a small amount of space where it's still able to be able to spread seed down here in the trough, but at the same time, it's not gonna be pouring it everywhere and immediately emptying out the bottle. Now there is a degree of adjustability to this as well, because this, just like these pieces, can be flipped upside down and it can bring up 
the piece a little bit more. All right, so it is time for this week's mystery file, and we're running two of the three bits that you need to see and see with me. First and foremost, we're gonna be running the bull bit, and then we're gonna be doing the downtown Jenny. Now, Mitt specifically asked for some weird sized MDF, and I don't have a lot of tools that are working, so it's mainly the size MDF that uh, the Mitt's asked for. So hopefully we're gonna be doing some profile cuts and making it look a lot prettier because the piece is not looking great, but let's see what happens. Well, I like it. I, I don't know what it is, but I do like it. It fits really tight together. I feel like there's a lot of different configurations for it. Maybe this is supposed to be upside down. Let me know down in the comments if you feel like you know what this is. Thanks, Mitz. Huge announcement for CNC with me members. This is Lisa and Vernon Hinkle of Hinkle Shop. You can go ahead and check out their YouTube channel because on a monthly basis, they're gonna be coming out with some brand new projects and all of those files are gonna be available for CNC with me members. This is like the start of phase two where we're gonna have some new instructors coming aboard and they all have YouTube channels. So as the weeks keep on going by, we're gonna be trickling them out and showing them off, but just massively thankful for their trust to be able to join the network and be able to get plugged in with CNC with me. So if you are a member of CNC with me, go ahead and check out Hinkle Shop, or even if you're not, <laughs> and watch their content because they've got some great stuff. We've got some awesome stuff in store. I'm just going to be using screws to assemble this, no glue whatsoever, and I'm definitely not going to finish it because I love the way that gray wood looks. So I'm not going to be putting any type of finish on this. I really want it to get sun bleached and grayed really, really quickly. And I know that the more that that happens, the more the wood is going to breathe and the more areas are going to open up. Because if we were to put wood glue on there, that's some area that as this is moving, as this is contracting and expanding, it's gonna break those wood glue joints. But if you have screws in there, you can go ahead, screw it all in place, and then revisit it in about two weeks and know where you're supposed to be able to release some tension or add some tension in those screws. So that this is one nice complete unit and it's gonna last you for a really long time. Now, last but not least, and definitely something that I wanna talk about is something that I messed up on. I messed up on the roof and that's because my wasteboard. And long story short, it just didn't cut the way that it needed to and I had to remove a lot of material in order to free these parts, which left me with some gaps. If you're using this correctly and you're using this on a nice flat CNC machine, you're not gonna have any troubles at all, especially if you're using one inch material. And I go through all of that in the toolpath tutorial for all the CNC with me members who are immediately going to have access to these files. Go ahead, jump over there and download them right now. But for me, it kind of left me with a little bit of a janky roof. So for me, I'm just going to be using wood screws in order to put this in, but the gaps are really just not correct. Now it doesn't look horrible, but it doesn't look as clean and crisp as it should. And that's purely on me and my wasteboard and how I cut things out today. So this little gap and this little gap will be much more mated for y'all who are actually are properly using your machines. As far as attaching this to the tree, I just went ahead and pre-drilled two screw locations and then sunk it into the tree. The reason that I didn't include that in the files to begin with is because I don't know how people are gonna be mounting this and the different ways that they're putting it on the things they want to. Whether you're mounting it onto a house or to a deck or to a tree like this, there's a bunch of different ways. So I just attached this to the tree with two screws and I made sure that it wasn't leaning out so that the bottle wasn't falling outwards like this and it was staying back. You wanna pick a tree that's slightly leaning back so that the bottle doesn't have that much more need to go out like this. Now, one thing that I do wanna mention is if you're putting this seed down, it is gravity fed. So you wanna make sure to kinda of like put seed down before you put the bottle because as you can see right here, this area was completely dry. I flipped the bottle over and it emptied out half the bottle immediately. Obviously that's not a big issue, but that is something that you need to know if you're making one of these. Another thing to pay attention to is that I'm using very, very small seed with this. If you use large seed and you try to put that into your bottle, there's a really great chance that moisture is gonna get right here and it's gonna stop up the bottle. So using small bird seed or even like crushed up corn is gonna be the way to go with this in particular. If you've got a bigger bottle, you might wanna be able to create a bigger sized hole right here, but this is specifically sized for liquor bottles and is gonna accommodate the majority of them. Whereas if you're using a bigger bird seed mix, you probably are going to have to have a wider mouth in there. So making the hole bigger is probably gonna be the way to go. There's a lot of different ways to make this and a lot of different material to make it, but I will keep y'all up to date on how this weathers in because I'm really excited. I hope it has like a really nice gray tone to it and completely matches into the tree in just a few months. So if you don't hear back from me on that, go ahead and like it. Let me know down in the comments in a few months and I'll make sure to do some type of an update in a future video. For everybody over on CNC with me, the files are available as well as the toolpath tutorial because this one seems pretty tricky. 
<laughs> but it's really simple and we go over that pretty quickly over there. So thank you very much and I'll be seeing y'all next Friday. Bye.